dialed in. <coughs> um, all right, so we got the GP. As that slide said, there's always room to improve. If you're at 30%, there's definitely room to improve, right? 30% is, is not strong enough, right? Okay, so there's that. Um, so the profit centers at our shops, right? This is the same for all of us. Um, we've got labor parts, materials, and sublet. Everybody agree with that, right? Okay, here's a contribution uh, mix, right? And I, I would add, if you, if, in your book, it has a spot to put down what yours are. I'm not gonna expect anybody in this room to have that kind of info with them right now. But again, um, if you take this book back, did I lose you? I'm on page five. Well, yeah, that's six. You're right. That's six. That's six. So it should, though I'm not going to just real quick because I didn't bring this up, and, and I think it does get off a little bit, but see my little six in the bottom right-hand corner? It should match the book. It probably won't after we get about halfway because I've probably changed slides and crap over time, but like for this first little bit, it's going to hit. It will be close. That number will be close to where we're at in the book. Sometimes there's things that people put in these classes that I'm just like, oh, I don't like that. I just don't see. So it happens, right? So there's that, right? So there's your profit centers. Um, I had that up here, right? So parts, material, labor, labor, sublet, right? And pretty much everything falls into that. Um, the next thing down is, you know, what are the what are your margins for those departments? That is something that you should know, my business owners in here especially, right? I don't expect you to have it with you right now. I'm sure you do know it, but you gotta know those numbers, right? Then the next slide is, is this, right? Which again, this comes from A code averages. So right now, this is what their sales mix is on average, the industry average on gross margin, and our contribution to overall gross, okay? Your shop mix is probably a little different than that, but depending on what your shop looks like, it's probably pretty close. Does that mean you see what I mean? My dealers, quite honestly, tend to have more part sales, you know, um, but it's not always that way. It kind of depends. You can get heavy DRP shop. You could not. The point is, is you really need to know these numbers for your own store, right? But when you get into the averages, right, you look at percent to sale numbers for labor, parts, material, and sublet. And what that's saying is, is that of the 100% of our completes, of our, of our mix, right, 45% of it's labor, 40% is part, only 10% of it is material, which is what we're here to talk about today, is material, and 5% is sublet. When you break it down a little further, you can see what the industry average is, is on gross margin, right? 55 on labor, and materials is hovering at 38, you can see the thing. Then the contribution to gross, right? So when you break that all down, if you're running at that numbers, how much does that individual department <coughs> contribute to your gross profit? Well, obviously labor is our big winner at almost 25%. Materials is only contributing just a hair under 4% to your overall gross profit margin. Does that make sense to everybody? Because it's, it's mix is less, okay? So, um, if you want to increase your gross margin, we'll go through this. This can get a little bit confusing, so I might have to read this to you. So, um, so how much must the gross margin of each department increase to impact the whole? So, if a percent to sale number for labor is 45%, and you want gross margin to increase just by 1%, then 1% divided by the 0.45 will give you approximately 2%, right? And that's in your book, right? 2% labor GP improvement is what is needed to move that number, okay? So therefore, if labor gross margin increases by 2% from 55 to 57, the overall gross margin will increase to 42. Now there's gonna be an example in a case study here that will probably break this down just a little bit easier for you, okay? So if you look at page eight, a reliable auto body case study. Okay, so Joe is the owner of Reliable Auto Body Incorporated. His business has been in this, has been a staple in his community for 15 years. And while Joe is very happy with the progress of his business to this point, he recognizes that gross profit could be much better. The table sh below shows the current sales mix in his facility as it stands today, and we just use the average if you look at if you look at that, right. 
So, Joe has set a goal to take his current gross profit percentage from 29 to 35, right? Pretty good goal. Assuming he doesn't change his sales mix, right? Because that, that can throw things off, but just assuming that the sales mix stays the same, which by the way, your sales mix is pretty consistent um, at your store, unless you really make an effort into doing some repair versus replace change, right? That can change your sales mix. Um, assuming he doesn't change his sales mix, how much will he need to improve his GP for each department to reach his goal, okay? So all I'm really trying to show y'all here, um, and again, I don't want you to take this as don't focus on paint material, right, because this is a paint material class, but I want to make sure everybody realizes that if you're trying to move a number, right, especially my business owners in here, right, if in this scenario, if Joe wants to, um, his desired increase for gross margin is 6% for labor and his sales mix is 45. His increase in department gross margin needed is 13.3% for labor, right? Okay, so it's, a, it's not an insurmountable number, right? Parts, same, basically pretty close, right? At 6% with a 40% sales mix, um, the increase he needs there is 15%. Right? If he wants to move his overall GP by six points, is everybody still following me? Okay. If you just wanted to focus on material, you'd have to bump your material GP by 60%, which isn't realistic, right? You can't do that with our DRP programs and everything else that's out there. And then you can see sublet what it would take to actually move it six points. Okay. Now. Obviously, our biggest chance for improvement here, and that's what I'm trying to tell people, is, is in parts and labor, right? So if you're looking at your overall gross profit and you want to move the number, your focus should be on labor and parts, right? Not on necessarily on paint material, okay? That's really the message there, okay? Again, I don't want you to ignore your paint material uh, account, right? Because that is the one bucket, one of the buckets we have to make money it's just not the one that you can actually make a big wave, right, in your store like you can with labor parts, okay? So, everybody following me on that? You with me? Okay, so here's a quick, uh, just a quick overview of some A-coat targets. I, I explained to you what A-coat means already, right? So our industry average on sales mix, right? I'm not gonna read all those numbers to you, okay? And then there's the A code average, right? And then on the other side, it shows us our gross profit. So our industry average, the A code target or average, both. And here's the difference too. At our 20 groups, and when we do people's financials, we break labor down, right? We break it down from body to paint to mechanical. It's not just all lumped into one, one labor field, right? Because it doesn't help you if you want to move that labor gross profit number, right, it's better to have it detailed and broken down because it could be that our best opportunity to move that number is in refinished labor, just as an example, right, as opposed to body, right? So having the detail gives you better direction on where to go focus your attention as opposed to just saying, oh, my overall GP is X and then throw the darts at the wall to try to go move that number. Does that make sense to everybody? Right, so we, we break it down a little bit further, but there's all the numbers and the efficiency numbers that come into play, okay? Make sense, everybody? And we publish this, by the way, once a year, um, and it's a little more detailed than this little screenshot, so um, if you want that from us, um, we, can get, we can get that out to everybody. I mean, you guys should see that come through, right? And then it can, it can go out. But we do those at the end of the winter. <coughs> Any questions so far on that? Good. Okay, so, so what are um, some of the key elements to achieving an above average paint material gross profit margin? And here they are. I think this is in your book. I don't think it's blank. Sometimes I can't tell because my guy has all the answers. So I can look smarter while I'm up here. But we got to account for it properly, right? So that's usually step one. I'll show you some of the tools that we use uh, to calculate uh, material gross profit and to track you if, as a customer. And I was talking to Ian earlier about how we're about to 
actually change that process and actually get into the 21st century with technology and get all of this stuff up into the cloud, which will be great for benchmarking and other things, right? But, you, but when I normally when I walk into a store and they tell me they've got a paint material profitability, the first thing, first issue I've got to find out is, is are we accounting for it properly, right? So it could be that you think you're running at a 15%, but I go in there and we've got new filters and all kinds of crazy shit going against your paint material GP. Does that make sense? So accounting for it properly um, is important. And that's not just so the paint company can look good, it's so you can manage your business properly. You need to know the detail, right? What am I spending on booth filters? What am I spending on all of these cost expenses that I have at my store, right? And we don't need it. The more it's lumped together, the less you can tell, right? So the more detailed it is, the more detailed your uh, uh, chart of accounts is for your accounting, the better, right? You have a good chart of accounts that you're So you just grid that. I can get you one if you would like one. Okay. okay. Um, so that's important, especially at an independent store, that you have your chart of accounts set up and then you have your system feeding it into the right place so then you can look at it and make good business decisions. You know? um, so uh, we always got to analyze uh, the key indicators for tracking. We'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, we got to get paid for what we do. The biggest thing that hurts your paint material profitability is not billing them for things that you're doing. Okay, um, That is by far uh, hurts you more than any kind of expense, cost, containment issue that you have. Unless you've got some serious theft or something going on in your store, that could change that, right? Um, but that usually kind of rears its head pretty quick when all of a sudden we've got gallons of clears missing, right? You know? um, so technician training and defined standards um, and inventory management, we still got to have all these things, waste reduction, safety, and possibly um, implementing some incentive options, right? You know, if you want people to help you manage, in this case, cost, if you tie their pay plan to it, they tend to help you, right? So an example would be, I told you I was an ex-body shop manager. At one point in my life, I had a problem with receivables, okay? So I tied in my receivables to my estimator's pay plan. And lo and behold, they started chasing the money down. It's funny how that worked, right? But before, they couldn't do it. When it was tied to their pay plan, somehow they made the time to get me my money, right? So I'm just using that for an example. Um, it, it does work, okay? So I'm really not gonna get into this much, but it is true that often we accuse someone of theft or being wasteful or only to find out um, that it's another cause, don't jump to conclusions. Um, that's true. Um, what you've got to do is you've got to you got to see the numbers first, right? Um, I will say that even though it's kind of a weird place for that slide to be, in my humble opinion, um, I am guilty of my paint material profitability not being where I want it to be, and my knee-jerk reaction is to run out into my shop and crack the whip, for lack of a better word, right? In occasions, I might have been right about that, um, and there's always room to improve your process within the store on expense and things like that. But a lot of times I wasn't right. Um, it was the office that was the problem. You know. So when you think about paint material profitability, we always think about what happens out in the back, that that's what's affecting that number. And I'm, and I'm telling you, your office affects that number more than your shop could ever imagine to affect it. Now, some of those are DRP agreements that we make, and if we make business decisions, right, to be on a DRP, and um, we're gonna accept this cap, or we're gonna accept whatever it is, then, then it is what it is, right? I mean, we're taking a, DRP is just a wholesale agreement that you've decided to take volume and give away a concession to get that volume, right? Um, and that's really what that is, right? But, don't jump to conclusions when you're looking at this kind of stuff, think through it. Right? And in this case, a lot of times the office affects that number more than what, what we do after that, right? So, um, so in, in order to measure use, uh, paint material must be grouped into one of the following categories, right? So we've got liquids, which is a cost of goods sold. That's what COGS mean, right? Does everybody understand what a cost of goods sold is? 
it's okay if you don't. I'm happy to talk about it, but this isn't an accounting class. But so the, the, the cost has to follow the sales. So in this case, liquid and allied fall under that because we sell that back to against that account, right? Does it make sense? <coughs> so liquid and allied are cost of goods sold to our paint material account. That's what that's telling you. Shop supplies are an overhead expense. Small tools are an overhead expense. Equipment is an overhead expense. Now down here, we could probably get into a little debate. If I had some insurance people in here, I'd be happy to debate them on it. Um, but we have body shop materials, hazardous waste, and clips and fasteners that fall into cost of goods sold for material and for parts. I don't think this is as big as a problem as it once was, but it's still, it's still a problem. Still a problem. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're not going to willingly just say, hey, like, they're these money for No, no, yeah, right, they're not. But I guess in, in, that's totally true. Um, but I used to have a lot more shops that, because they bought their clips and fasteners maybe from the same supplier that it ended up against their paint material account. What I will tell, here's what I'm just going to tell you about, and I'm not going to get caught up into this clip thing. Here's what I tell people when I'm, when I'm talking about.